Hi, I'm Donald Tallman, the Executive Director of the Colorado Railroad Museum. I'd like to welcome you to our latest edition of the Iron Horse Video News Magazine. You know, we are right in the middle of our Day Out with Thomas event. And last weekend, although it was really wet, we had over 6,000 people enjoying our Day Out with Thomas experience. It's a, it's a wonderful time for us, and we look forward to the next two weeks of Day Out with Thomas. You know, in this issue, we've got Jack Campbell, our chief mechanical officer, talking a little bit about our Locomotive 491, um, our UP Diner, and the 346, the, that's our steam locomotive, 346 Ridgeway Stack. It's a, called a Bear Trap Stack, and he'll tell you what that's all about. Lauren Giebler will talk a little bit about our collection management and archives. Kathy McCardwell, our archivist. Uh, well, you know, since we're immersed in Day Out with Thomas, she's going to discuss our collection of historic children's literature. That should be a good one. And Carla Ehrenholtz, our education director, talks about the wide range of educational and enrichment programs that we have here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. So let's get started. This is the Colorado Railroad Museum's latest locomotive acquisition. Uh, it's part of the Colorado Narrow Gauge Superpower. It's Mikado 491 from the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. It actually has been on the museum property since 1985 on loan from History Colorado. Uh, here just recently they de-acquisitioned the locomotive and gave it to us. Now our volunteers are able to work on this locomotive and bring it to a much higher level of preservation. It was stored serviceable in 1963 and is in actually remarkably good condition. Uh, weather has had a bad way with it for a number of years and, and actually brought on the, uh, the change of ownership. Uh, but now that it is property of the, the uh, Railroad Museum here, we are able to unleash our forces to uh, undo the weather situations and bring it back to a much higher level of preservation. Uh, I would like to also talk about our diner, our UP diner, which has been recently painted and will be moved for uh, viewing by the museum building here soon. The museum purchased the diner a couple of years ago from Zantera. Uh, our forces started work on it, painting it in UP livery. Uh, it has air conditioning and heating going into it and soon will be available for event support here at the museum. Recently we've also put a bear trap on our locomotive 346. Uh, we were having some spot fire issues with the dryness in Colorado and uh, the addition of this bear trap just allows us to operate the engine more safely and uh, 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 more managed as far as uh, fire support. Hi, I'm Lauren, curator at the Colorado Railroad Museum. My job includes developing exhibits, managing our artifacts, and coordinating volunteers. In previous newsletters, I've focused on some of our current exhibits, but now I'd like to talk a little bit about our collection. Here at the museum, we have approximately 5,000 to 10,000 artifacts. I say approximately because we're still working on a comprehensive inventory. Our collection includes uniforms, lanterns, tools, signs, railroad china and silver, model trains, and much, much more. In 2010, I recruited a team of volunteers to help with this inventory. This is Mark Hunter, and he is reviewing objects that have already been cataloged. Part of the inventory process includes cataloging each artifact the museum has. For every object, a detailed description is written, we assess its condition, we assign it a unique 11 digit number, we photograph it, and we store it in archival safe boxes. As you can see, a paper record is filled out 
for every object that we have. And then that same data is entered into our computer management program, Past Perfect. This program makes all of our artifact data available with a single mouse click. It speeds up our management process and allows us to rotate a wide variety of artifacts throughout our exhibits. Since 2013, we've cataloged over 2,000 objects, with almost 1,800 of them entered into Past Perfect. We still have a lot to go, though, so we'd better get back to it. Hi, I'm Kathy McCardwell, the librarian and archivist at the Colorado Railroad Museum's Richardson Library. Since we just had our annual visit from Thomas the Tank Engine, I wanted to use this edition to introduce you to our collection of historic children's literature. Because most of these are historic resources, they're available primarily to researchers. However, we do have some contemporary reprints available for our younger visitors. First, of course, is the Thomas the Tank Engine series of books. The Thomas series was begun by Reverend Wilbert Audrey, who told the first stories to his son, who was sick with measles. He found he had to write them down because his son was adamant that they'd be retold as bedtime stories, with no alterations at all. Once he'd written them down, his family urged him to submit them for publication. The first of Audrey's railroad stories were published in 1945, Thomas made his first appearance in 1946, and Audrey continued to publish Thomas books until the early 1970s. Though the Richardson Library doesn't have original copies of these works, we do have a full compendium of the reprinted stories for those interested in Thomas and Friends in their earlier form. In addition to picture storybooks like these, the collection also includes a number of nonfiction books aimed at developing a vocational interest in trains and public transportation. Titles such as Perhaps I'll Be a Railroad Man encourage boys to consider a career in railroading, and The Railway Book for Boys provided a background in railroad history, the internal workings of a steam engine, and the famous trains of the world. And of course, for the older kids and adults, there were a number of novelizations of real and imagined events, including some by such famous authors as Horatio Alger and Victor Appleton of Tom Swift fame. These pieces are all interesting as historic resources, and many of them include visually interesting illustrations. If you would like to access these works, please stop by or contact the library. Hi, I'm Education Manager Carla Arnholtz. This past year, we've created many new and exciting programs, from adult programs to those designed for families and children to those specifically for schools. There's something for every visitor here at the museum. Adults can join us at our lecture series, Colorado Rails and Cocktails. You'll relax, enjoy a beverage, and experience a time when railroads were shaping the American West. Tickets are still available to upcoming lectures in October and December, but they sell out quickly, so get yours today at our online depot store. Families will discover lots of fun opportunities for learning at the museum. On Tuesdays at 10, there's story time for children ages 2 and up. Children ages 2 to 13 can soon join the Junior Engineer Club and receive lots of discounts and free admission to the museum. Our new Junior Engineer Activity books will soon be available in our store to help guide your child's experience at the museum. You can also join us at our Parent and Child Workshops for a fun, hands-on way to learn about Colorado Railroads together with your child. Visitors of all ages can join us on select Sundays for Hiram's Railroad Demos. Free with admission, these demos bring railroad artifacts to life and give visitors a sneak peek into the world of railroading, past and present. Teachers can bring the museum right into the classroom by checking out the artifact trunk or booking an outreach program. Groups can join us on a field trip and teachers can request activity sheets to supplement their students' learning and enhance their experience. Check out our website at coloradorailroadmuseum.org to see more about all of our upcoming programs. Hi, I'm Jim McGee, volunteer at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Uh, I've been volunteering here since uh, sometime in 1997 when the library opened. Uh, known Kenton Forrest for a long time and came out to help him out. And uh, that's uh, evolved into a lot of work in the library and other areas of the museum, some restoration work and uh, several years working Thomas. and. Uh, it's just real enjoyable for me uh, to be able to preserve some history uh, so other people can see it that don't know anything about railroads and uh, I think that's probably the biggest uh, benefit that I get from being here and uh, also a volunteer on some other railroad activities so uh, just generally enjoy the, the history and uh, being around the equipment, uh, I'm not an expert on 
steam power or any of that, but uh, I just enjoy being here and having a good time and uh, we've met a lot of great people uh, through the years here. So. Hi, my name is Al Blount. I'm uh, Vice President of the Board of Trustees and I've also been a volunteer out here at the museum for going on 12 years. If you come out on a Saturday, most of the times I'll be driving uh, Galloping Goose number seven. We do have three of the Galloping Geese out of a total of seven, and they all run. And if you come out on a day when we're running steam or diesel, or Thomas, I'll be your conductor on the train. If you'd like to be a volunteer, come out and join us. We do have a lot of fun out here, and we're preserving Colorado railroad history. I remember one time I was taking dinner reservations and I knocked on this one door and uh, I, he muffled something through the door. And so I said, well, this is Joseph Ferret. What time would you gonna have dinner tonight? And I think he said seven or eight o'clock, whatever he said. And I said, I unthinkingly said, is your wife in there with you? Because I knew who the gentleman was and I knew he had a wife with him on the train. And he said something, I don't know what it was, and I just said, well, thank you very much. I'll just slip your reservation under the door. And away I went. Well, later that evening, I was in the rear uh, car, in the observation car, and I was heading back towards the, uh, the rest of the train. And he stopped me and he said, just who do you think you are? I said, I beg your pardon? And he said, well, whose business is it of yours whether the woman in my room is my wife or not? And I looked at him and I tried very hard to explain that that was not the purpose, that I just didn't want her to duplicate the reservation if she were up in one of the domes or in the dining room or somebody. And he just ripped me up one side and down the other. And finally, I looked at him. He said, who do you think you are? And I looked at him, I said, well, I'll tell you wh who I am. I'm not paid by the railroad to stand here and take these insults from you. And I said, as far as I'm concerned, you're just trying to make trouble. With that, as I walked away, everybody in the rear dome clapped. I've never forgotten that experience. After our Day Out with Thomas event in September, come back in October for our Halloween train. It's a great way to spend some time with the kids, trick-or-treating. Uh, we've got a lot of great activities for them on hand. And for our adult program, we have our Rails and Cocktails event, which features Hiram Wheeler, our own 19th century brakeman, featuring Steve Lee, who will interpret what it was like in the 19th century to, be, to work on the railroad. Don't miss it. Until the next time, I'm Donald Tallman. Don't forget to come by and lose track of time.